I have a certain fondness for the shooter genre, from Counter-Strike and Call of Duty all the way through to Fear and Doom. Maybe it's an infatuation with guns, or I just like the things that go bang when I click my mouse. Regardless, they have been my bread and butter for, well, as long as I've played video games. As the medium progressed and it became apparent that video games could actually tell stories more than eat pills, avoid ghosts, we started seeing more and more mature themes come to fruition. Call of Duty touched on the horrors of World War II and World at War, ready or not, as a hyper-exaggerated world of corruption and violence, with heavy themes of drug use and child exploitation, and Spec Ops The Line as a meta-commentary on the military shooter genre as a whole. That, without going into heavy spoilers for the story, questions your every move. Do you feel like a hero yet? And as much as I have enjoyed these titles and many like it, I'm finding it a little hard to breathe because of how thick this atmosphere is. Don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking these stories. Some may be Hollywooded up to 11 and be making rather on-the-nose points about our modern society, and I appreciate them for it. But there is a number of times I want to play a consequence for a shooter where fun is the priority and I don't need to feel bad about the moral choice in which group of pixels is going to end in a shallow grave. Serious Sam is a somewhat forgotten franchise that I revisit time to time because it is just that. Dumb fun. You are Serious Sam, a very serious guy in a not so serious world, and your objective is to shoot your way through hordes of demons, leaving demonic jam spattered across the landscape, and finding the exit to continue on to the next level to shoot hordes of demons, and so on. It's a classic formula in the vein of Doom and Quake where you have an absurdly large arsenal that even the US military is giving you the side eye. There is a story, big bad alien demon dude wants to take over Earth because bad, and you're seriously not about to let that happen. It is the epitome of stupid, and for that reason it is an absolute blast to play. Recently I stumbled across a game released in 2023 called Trepang 2 that shared similar elements. There is a plot, but much like the photo album you paid $800 for that sits on your coffee table, no one's really paying attention to it, no matter how much you nudge it towards them. You escape from captivity, you have both bullet time and cloaking capabilities, and your goal is to complete whatever objective is needed while making sure cleanup crews have a stable income for years to come. Again, a not so serious game that has moments when the fourth wheel starts to fall off, but the moment to moment shooting and chaotic energy keeps you going, as well as dual wielding SPAS-12 shotguns. It also helps that it's supported by a banger of a soundtrack that much like Doom 2016 will make it difficult to focus on the game because you'll probably be too busy headbanging. Speaking of, I believe Doom 2016 achieved what shooters have been missing for a few years. Pure, unadulterated fun. Fast-paced octane movement with a wide range of weaponry to choose from, and enemies that due to their presence changed how fights played out. So correct prioritization was needed, but if you didn't think about it too much, all you needed to know was to move around, shoot, and don't die. Not about whether killing this particular demon was about to leave a fatherless family, and how this might spark an interdimensional conflict with dire ramifications. Moral and ethical conversations aren't relevant to the story, and with the plot being as surface level as possible, it also lessens the strain of needing excessive dialogue or exposition dumps in the most inconvenient of times. Ironically, Doom Eternal started to return to old ways with a story that started to get, dare I say, serious. Want to know more about the story? Go read the glossary, we're too busy killing pixels over here without the moral ambiguity. Personally, this isn't coming from an old games used to be better or I don't want politics in my games old man yells at cloud situation. I enjoy deep and complex stories. Metal Gear Solid 2 is one of my favourite games of all time and it will make you extremely uncomfortable with Kojima's prediction of artificial intelligence despite despite being released in 2001. To me, this is more of a core focus on gameplay rather than anything else. One could probably argue that this is what multiplayer shooters exist for, probably why I've played so much of them, but sometimes you want to take a train to single player land and holiday over there for a while instead. While the payoff of a gritty story can most certainly provide an emotional response and provide something to think about, I believe the dumb fun games are equally as important as cinematic story masterpieces since they act as a method to focus entirely on gameplay and explore new boundaries, or just throw hundreds of enemies at you in a cathartic dopamine release. Last night while writing this video, I tried out High on Life on Game Pass. It's a fever dream of a game where the story is more of a set dressing than it is an actual plot, but the core gameplay is, quite frankly, a blast. While the weapon choices are limited to five in total, they each have interesting designs with additional fire modes or abilities that mesh with the frantic nature of the combat. While designed to solve small puzzles to progress the levels, those same abilities can drastically change how fights play out in combination with the equipment that you obtain that grants more movement capabilities. As I say, the story sets the tone, which is, well, it's basically an interdimensional cable episode from Rick and Morty, Justin Roiland really only has one string to his bow. But due to the absurd nature of the story and dialogue, it also frees the gameplay to follow that same path. What I'm trying to say is that shooters have taken themselves too seriously for too long, with intense storylines trying to get through the notion that war is brutal, and questioning the ethics and morality that goes into killing. Instead I want more serious Sams, more Dooms, more high on lifes. Story can set the scene, but let the gameplay shine for instead. And maybe just a little less Justin Roiland over explaining jokes to fill time. Oh my god, finally I'm free, thank god! What a nightmare! Listen, can you pull the inhibitor chip out of me? It's the metal thing stuck in me, just pull it out!